hoor Simon, idioot. Ik neem je show over. What are you saying, ETA? What are you s- ik spreek Nederlands. Are you speaking Dutch? Ja, en ik beledig je idioot. I don't... I... Idioot. Well, that seems a bit harsh, but... With today's sponsor, ETA and I could soon be communicating together in Dutch, thanks to Babbel. Liever niet. You can start learning a new language today with Babbel. Sign up through the link below and you'll get 50% off. More on them in a bit. Good. Now get the f*** out of here. Oh, nee. More on them in a bit. This is Business Blaze. I am your boy with the blaze. Uh, also known as Simon. This script has been put together by Danny. Thank you, Danny. Lately, people were like, Simon, I noticed that the script slap is not a thing on Business Blaze anymore. And I was like, okay, I'm bringing it back. Is the top of my head getting cut off? I'm just gonna raise the camera up a little. That's the badger. Danny has written us a script, uh, Epic Advertising Pales Part 3, because as I always mention, when there's a part two and a part three, it's because on Monday morning, I come up with all the topics for like the next week. I normally come up with three business plays topics. And when I'm feeling particularly lazy and creatively bankrupt, I just come up with the, you know, part three, part four, part 19. It's not very often that I check what's trending on Twitter, as it's usually got something to do with either Donald Trump, Piers Morgan, Prince Harry, Kanye West, or the coronavirus. Why does everyone care about Piers Morgan. I understand like Donald Trump, he's the president, Prince Harry, he's a British royal, people for some reason care about that shit. Kanye West, he's like famous and insane. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye West. Who cares? Um, why do people care about Piers Morgan? I don't get it. Who are you, Piss? And why are you so famous? What am I doing wrong? I know, be more of a head. That's the only thing I know about Piers Morgan. Everyone says he's a dad. I don't even know why. He's like, uh, who's that other guy? Rupert Murdoch. There's one thing everyone knows. Rupert Murdoch is a dickhead. We don't really know why. I mean, we do with Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> we do. Uh, or coronavirus, which sounds like the lamest list of ingredients for a fun Friday night that I can possibly imagine. I don't know, that would be quite a party. It'd be a bit weird. I don't know who I'd rather talk to. I think, I'd ra- honestly, out of all those people, I'd probably rather talk to coronavirus. I did briefly get excited on the very day that I'm writing this business blaze script because viewer Broken Matt Rutland's brought to my attention a brand spanking new tweet from Blockbuster. Why is Blockbuster still tweeting? Are you around Blockbuster still? If you are, no one cares. Except for us, apparently, because here we are. As you might imagine, the former video chain has been a bit quiet lately. What? But after six years of radio silence, the Twitter sphere went into a brief meltdown when the official and verified Blockbuster account stuck its head above the parapet and tweeted that it was just checking in. In the space of just one day, those three simple words have so far generated 21,000 comments, 140 40,000 retweets and just under a million likes. Again, like, you know how I said, what am I doing wrong? Why is Piers Brosnan so famous? Uh, Piers Brosnan. Well, he's famous because he's a legend. Piers Morgan. Also, why don't I, I, I think the most likes I ever got was like a few thousand. <laughs> it's like, what am I doing? What am I doing wrong? Could it be Blockbuster is preparing for a surprise comeback? I knew that holding, keeping hold of all my VHS tapes was, tapes was going to turn out to be a good idea one day when the format finally fell back into trend again. It was only a matter of time. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for having to rewind videos back to the start when I want to watch them again, and how they degrade quality over time, and how the quality just generally sucks. It's gonna be awesome! Also, alas, the excitement was only very fleeting. Just eight hours later, the Blockbuster account tweeted, okay, we've seen enough, checking out. It looks as if the VHS revival may have been put on a flickering pause for another decade or two. I do wonder what that was all about. I guess we'll find out someday. <laughs> but a particularly savvy social media marketing team may do well to keep an eye on what's currently creating a buzz on Twitter, as you can often shift a load more products just by riding the wave of a trend. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna come up with some really mm, fine coronavirus merch. People were like, or more it was like Teespring were like, you can make a, a face mask for business plays. And I'm like, I don't know, that just doesn't feel right, does it? <laughs> I get it, but it, and, and it's like, it's not a charity thing, it's just like, it tells you, yeah, you can make this amount of profit on selling a face mask, and I'm like, look, I may be morally bankrupt, but I'm not that morally bankrupt. <laughs> uh, back in 2012, the small UK-based fashion brand, Celeb Boutique, was flogging a fancy dress called The Aurora, which was apparently inspired by Kim Kardashian, in the sense that it looks similar to the kind of thing she usually gets paid a big bag of cash to wear while she's casually taking hundreds of spontaneous selfies. Uh, noticing one morning that the hashtag Aurora seemed to be trending, Celeb Boutique thought it would be a good idea to post the following tweet. 
Aurora is trending, clearly about our Kim K inspired Aurora dress. These words were followed, it's probably nice, like, yeah, 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 the Aurora's actually a type of bomb that the US military uses to to kill terrorists and accidentally kill civilians. Oh, don't worry, UK military as well. We're all as bad as each other. These words were followed by a cheeky emotion co emoticon wink and a link to the product page for the expensive dress. But there was quite a good reason why Aurora was trending on the 20th of July 2012, and it was nothing to do with posh frocks. This was the morning after a mass shooting in place during a midnight screening of the ba new Batman film. Oh, yeah, of course. This was eight years ago? Fucking hell. Uh, Batman film The Dark Knight Rises in a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado. Twelve people were killed and a further 58 were injured in the massacre, which was at the time the largest number of casualties in one shooting incident. Yeah, we've outdone that. I mean, we as in humanity, because what the f is wrong with us? Generally, whenever I hear one of these, my, my reaction isn't like sympathy. I mean, it is. But my primary reaction is like, what the f is wrong with us? It's no surprise that Celebrity's surprisingly insensitive tweet ruffled more than a few feathers on Twitter. But did they know about the shooting before the tweet was posted? No, please God say they didn't. The company rather unconvincingly claimed ignorance. They reckoned that their PR team was not based in the US and they had not checked the reason why Aurora was trending that morning. This is despite the fact that the tweet was posted about 10 hours after the news first broke and dominated headlines worldwide. No, I'm giving them a pass on this one. Like, I could, I hardly read the news. Like, I don't really care. And I'll be like, oh my God, I could definitely do this. And people wouldn't believe. They'd be like, how could you not know, Simon? It was all over the news. It's like, I don't read the news. And they'd be like, well, you should. And I'll be like, I know, but it doesn't make me a bad person. I mean, it may, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to get in trouble for this one day. You'd expect people who work in social media for a living to check out why a hashtag is trending before jumping on it for a piggyback ride. Again, I'm going to give them a pass because they're so in their own heads that they really think that their dress could be trending on Twitter. Like if I saw Business Blaze trending on Twitter, and to trend on Twitter it has to be big, I'd be like, oh my god, what is happening? This is incredible. And it turns out that it was actually to do with a shopping center burning down. I'll be like, hey, Business Blaze trending, this is the best news ever. And then people would be like, Simon, 131 people died in that, in that Business Blaze. And I'll be like, Oh, I really thought it was me. And even if we believed that the team behind the tweet had been sticking their fingers in the areas the whole time, the knowing emoticon wink, is it emoticon or emoticon? I don't give a f uh, The knowing emoticon wink that uh, closed the offended tweet suggests that they knew exactly what they were doing. No, it doesn't. Danny, maybe I'll run a Twitter poll on this and we can find out if, or a YouTube poll and we can find out like, I don't know, I'm cutting, maybe I'm cutting them too much slack. Even the apology seemed a bit half-assed. Just a few minutes after the tweet had been pulled and replaced with these, with these implications that the social media team just didn't follow the news, Celebrity tried to cheer everyone up a bit. On the day that the world was still reeling in shock from the shooting massacre, they tweeted, It's a fabulous Friday. What are your weekend plans? And again, okay, I I'm gonna say, like, you can definitely schedule tweets, and if you're a big company like this, you will have scheduled tweets, like, weeks ahead. And yes, it's it's on you to make sure that, you know, you're checking them to make sure that nothing horrible happens, but this just sounds like the generic, boring company tweet, which is boring and terrible, and who cares? But, I mean, that could have been scheduled three weeks ago. Still, it could have been worse. Oh, moving on. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below who you think's right, me or Danny. You're never alone with a strand. The year is 1959, and a stylish black and white TV commercial in the UK is about to go down in the history books as something of a televisual triumph. Strand Cigarettes has been launched that very same year by WD and H.O. Wills, <laughs> Ho Wills, who had high hopes for their new value fire sticks and wanted to create something fresh and distinctive for their major advertising campaigns. Yeah, when I think of cigarettes, I think of fresh. <laughs> their job was eventually given to S.H. Benson copywriter John May, who came, oh, S.H. Benson, I guess is the name of the ad agency, who came up with the storyboard and script within 24 hours of being commissioned. He ended up creating one of the most memorable and most culturally referenced adverts of the 20th century. The 60 second commercial opens quietly on a moody, rain drenched streets of London at midnight. A man in a raincoat who's clearly channeling Frank Sinatra moodily walks along the deserted wet streets in a way that suggests unseen anguish and pain and loss. As if he's just finally sorted out a notorious criminal gang once and for all, but he couldn't quite get there in time to stop them throwing his grandmother over the 15th floor balcony. Danny, you need to write some books, son, because like, this is, I, I really like it, one. And uh, clearly, you've, you, you know, it, it's bottled up inside you. As he mooches down the street, lost 
in his own solitude. We hear the haunting background sounds of the Lonely Man theme composed by the Cliff Adams Orchestra. No idea what that is. Eventually, the Sinatra lookalike stops for a moment, pulls out a strand cigarette, and lights it with a sense of world-weary resignation combined with just a flicker of desperate relief, and maybe even a soup con of hope for tomorrow. Wow, and soup con. I don't even know that word. As he puffs away on the stick, a reassuring voiceover informs us that you're never alone with a strand, the cigarette of the moment. He also adds helpfully, Wonderful value at three and tuppence for 20. <laughs> that seems wildly out of place. He's just like, <sighs> Life. 50p. <laughs> also, just like to comment on cigarettes and movies and stuff. It does amaze me that I still, you still go to the cinema and you'll see movies where the cool characters are smoking cigarettes. And I'm like, wow. And they make cigarette smoking look cool. And I'm like, I mean, that's essentially advertising. Where I, it might not be for a specific cigarette, but there are movies out there that make smoking look cool. Like when Vin Diesel is like doing his thing and he's like racing in a car and he's living dangerously and then he's like lighting up a cigarette or whatever. I don't know, like not Vin, I don't know specifically Vin Diesel, but you know, like a movie star and he's like super handsome and he's like, and I'm like, wow, if I smoked, I'd be that handsome. Here's the thing, the commercials seem to be really popular with critics and viewers alike. That Lonely Man instrumental actually entered the UK music charts purely on the strength of the commercial, which never really happened in those days. It reached number 39 and may have climbed much higher if the BBC hadn't banned it from the airwaves when they realized they might get accused of helping to ad advertise cigarettes. It's 1959, who cares? Strand cigarettes would fondly be remembered for decades to follow, getting name-checked in classic songs by Roxy Movie uh, Music and David Bowie. Unfortunately, strand cigarettes were pulled from sale within the space of about a year of the advert's launch, because as stylish and as memorable as the film noir commercial may be, it also appeared to convey a very clear message that only the most desperately sad wanker would stoop so low as to smoke a strand. Nobody really wanted to be seen as the strange raincoat man wandering alone at night with only a pack of cheap cigarettes to call a friend. And just 0.7% of female smokers and 0.3% of male smokers bought the brand. However, always not, that doesn't sound bad. Like if this YouTube channel was 0.7% of YouTube views, I'd be like, it's a business, son. But I ain't coca melon. However, always not lost. Learning from their mistakes, WD and Ho Wills decided to go to the other extreme when they rebranded their cigarettes as Embassy in 1962. They produced a TV commercial which showed a sad man at a house party who's getting ignored by everyone else until he pulls out a packet of new Embassy cigarettes and suddenly everyone wants to be his best buddy. Embassy ended up becoming the best-selling cigarette of the decade in the UK and it's still around today. I think I've heard of it. There's also this brilliant quote, I have no idea who it's by, and it's like, if you're at a house party, alone and you're staring out of a window, you're a loser. If you're at a house party, alone, staring out of a window and smoking a cigarette, you're a philosopher. I thought this was, uh, business plays should stop advertising cigarettes. Don't smoke, kids, it will kill you. You know what won't kill you? Babel, because you can get 50% off with them below. ETA, come over here, you Dutch-speaking bastard. Laat me met rust. Rooker. All right, I have no idea what you're saying, and your pronunciation's probably terrible because I probably couldn't find a robot voice for you in Dutch, so I just put in the Dutch translation. <laughs> ah, it's your good old Australian accent, which he sure does. Okay, look, but, but seriously, you don't need to talk to ETA. There are lots of reasons why you might need to learn a language. Uh, I live in a foreign country, so I am familiar with that need. Uh, and Babel absolutely make that easy. Uh, also, professional reasons. I don't need for professional reasons. I just work alone. But for people who are traveling abroad to work and have to communicate in a foreign language like Dutch, well, they can use Babel to get a grip on that. Now, look, you might have had a crack at this already. Yeah, there are basic free apps. I've tried them. They're kind of full of advertising and they have all these, you know, that the, the sentences and the learning stuff is constructed by like algorithms. So I have all these crazy sentences which don't make any sense. You're like, why would I ever need to say this? It would be like, the mother runs to the egg store. And you're like, all right. But, uh, what? <laughs> but Babel is put together by experts, you know, human people who actually know what you need to say when you're speaking a language. So that is obviously awesome and useful and just, well, not shit. The mother rent naar de eierwinkel. Uh, also, there's no ads. Um, so you can just focus on learning rather than being like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having a really good time learning this language. I'm doing so well. Ooh, Raid Shadow Legends? <laughs> no, none of that nonsense. Did Raid Shadow Legends just get a plug within 
a plug. Uh, they've also got an app. Uh, I showed that at the beginning. Uh, so you can just jump in, get a few minutes practice wherever you are. So, like, I don't know, if you commute to work on the train, or you're like waiting in the doctor's office or something, you're just like, yeah, whip through a little bit. And that 10 minutes of practice each day or whatever, it adds up. It's also super nice and easy to use. It's very, uh, you know, the app's intuitive. There's lots of apps out there where it's like, oh, what am I doing? I'm lost. Not with Babel. It's easy to use. So look, enough from me. Enough from ETA. Start learning a new language with Babel for whatever reason. Personal, professional, all of that stuff. There's a link below and you get 50% off. For how long? Oh my god, six months? Half a year? I thought it'd be like a month. Six months, 50% off. Next up, suicide is painful. <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna have to redo this ad placement, aren't I? <laughs> me. Sticking just for a little... Sticking just for a little while longer with the subject of desperately sad men. Oh, God. <laughs> a 2013 advert from South Korean automobile manufacturer uh, took the concept much further in a UK commercial for their iX35 car. They decided to play around with the idea of a man who was so fed up with life that it decided to kill himself. Jesus, that's not gonna fly. Ah, it's a remarkably eerie and quiet advertisement. From inside, a locked suburban garage. Oh my God, are you for real? We see that a forlorn-looking man is getting inside his car to prepare himself with what he assumes is his final act. He intends to funnel the vehicle's exhaust fumes inside the car and ultimately die from carbon monoxide poisoning. It's an almost painfully grim 60 seconds of TV advertising as the suicidal man gets comfortable in the car seat, slowly closes his eyes, and braces himself for his descent into darkness. But wait a minute, here comes the punchline. I know what the punchline is going to be. It's going to be like, wow, our car emits so few emissions or it's electric or some shit that this guy couldn't kill himself. Guys. <laughs> Not okay. As we've already discussed, I'm not exactly not morally bankrupt, but this isn't gonna sell any cars. As it turns out, the new Hyundai uh, I iX35 is actually a fuel cell car, what a shocker, not a gas or diesel car, so the tailpipe of the vehicle only emits water vapor. He can't kill himself after all. Oh no. As the dialogue free commercial closes with the caption explaining that the new iX35 features 100% water emissions, we see the man silently open the garage door, walk back into his house, pull out a gun, and shoot himself in the head. Not really. He enters the house in droopy defeat. Clearly upset that he can't even kill himself without cocking something up. If only he had a strand to cheer him up a bit. <laughs> Remarkably, the ad initially attracted a claim in some quarters. The respected UK marketing magazine The Drum named it their ad of the week, and the Guardian newspaper recommended it to readers and displayed it on their website. Am I missing something? This seems wildly inappropriate. I'm all for originality and creativity and breaking boundaries in the world of automobile marketing. There's only. Have you guys seen there's a great YouTube channel? <laughs> you know, finish this video first because I need that sweet watch time and money um but there's a great youtube channel called zebra corner <laughs> where there's this dude i feel like he's maybe he's australian i don't know but he has like a really oh no maybe he's american he has like a really strong accent <laughs> and he's got like these uh he takes like a car commercial and he green screens himself in and he pretends to be in the commercial and there's this one where it's like they take like i don't know like fucking chevrolet or someone has taken the badges off the car and in the advert the dealer is showing you know mystery shoppers the car and being like can you tell me what car this is and they're like oh it's a mercedes no it's a bmw no it's it's a bentley and the zebra corner dude's just like what are you talking about <laughs> it's clearly a fucking chevy awesome i don't know why i spent as 45 seconds describing this guy's video when you can just go watch it and you know that's all that's it really there's only so many times you can see a car driving down a mountain road before you start figuring out that you don't live near any mountains the advert was certainly a little bold and a little different but although i'm usually a fan of black humor this just seemed unnecessarily unsettling and unpleasant for a tv ad that's trying to flog you a new car despite the earlier claim the comments soon came rolling in during the first week the guardian quickly withdrew its recommendation and banned the ad advert from its website on the grounds that it was inconsistent with Guardian editorial guidelines on the coverage of suicide. Yeah, no shit, Guardian. Uh, the tip of the iceberg seemed to be when a freelance copywriter wrote a blog article which called on Hyundai to drop their ad. Her own father had committed suicide in a very similar fashion, and to hammer the point home on how upset she felt by this, she shared his suicide note online. Okay, I mean, also the ad's bad, but I mean, just, just be like, this is a ad, you don't need to go so far. It, it seems a little unnecessary, doesn't it?
This boy has no heart! I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that. You naturally feel deep sympathy for the copywriter's loss, but I'm not convinced that we should have a blanket ban on using topics in humor that may offend people who've been through similar experiences. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say. This is why Danny's a writer, because, you know, he can express himself properly. Again, maybe it wasn't entirely appropriate for a car commercial, though. But as the blog post went by viral and Hyundai UK had dropped the advert within the week, alongside an apology which shifted the blame onto the ad agency. Guys, this is like... Apology 101, don't shift the blame. Like, you have some responsibility here. People want to see you own it. Just own it! I'd like my life back. Uh, their statement starts off quite sincere. Hyundai understands that the video has caused offense. We apologize unreservedly. The video has been taken down and will not be used in any of our advertising or marketing. We're very sorry for any offense or distress that the video caused. But it finishes off quite lamely with, this video was created by an affiliate advertising agency in Ocean Europe without Hyundai's request or approval. Okay, uh, hold on, hold on. That feels like a f lie, allegedly. Uh, your advertising agency, uh, sorry, sorry, your affiliated advertising agency made an advert without you requesting it. Yeah, 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 because I just did this ad for Babel for fun. Like, they did not request it, they did not re approve it, they absolutely did. This advert was requested and approved. Companies, Simon, anyone, doesn't advertise sh free, except for Raid. Raid Shadow Legends. And I mostly advertise how much of a piece of sh it is. Okay, allegedly. Maybe Hyundai should have listened to US trade publication Adweek. Before the commercial was launched, Ad Adweek published a blog post which suggested that the forthcoming commercial was crass. I would use a different word. And warned Hyundai to drop the ad because it was guaranteed to cause offense. Hyundai never responded to the piece and ended up driving the whole campaign to suicide. But a bomb bomb Damaged goods. I've got a couple of good friends who live in South Africa. And it sounds as if this is one of the places you don't really want to be during virus time. Oh my god, my grandma got coronavirus. She lives in South Africa and she was totally fine. She's like 90 something years old. She lives in like an old person's home. Everyone or whatever got corona. And she was just like, no, I did. I, I mean, I had it. I tested positive for it. Uh, didn't have any symptoms whatsoever. And I'm like, Grandma, you're going to live forever. The government couldn't seem to make their minds up about the best strategy to adopt and initially implemented the strictest lockdown in the world. One of my friends received a visit from the police and a stern caution after one of the neighbors snitched on her for taking her dog to a small patch of grass at the end of her road for five minutes. Holy sh**. The secret police! Another friend had to, mo had, most had to leave most of his shopping at the checkout when he was told that he was o uh, only allowed to purchase absolutely essential items, which apparently excluded pretty much everything apart from food and toilet roll. <laughs> even worse, the South African government even went so far as to ban the sale of alcohol and cigarettes completely during lockdown. What the f Which would have me rioting on the streets if there hadn't been a virus thing going around. <laughs> oh my god. Like, the wasn't there like there was a protest in Spain? Like where they weren't wearing masks, they had an anti-mask protest. I'm like, what the fuck? Put on your fucking mask, you selfish pricks. Fortunately, they changed their mind and they lifted a ban, and then they reinforced it, and then they lifted it. Make up your minds, guys. Uh, over the years, the South African government has often had problems in conveying a clear message. The country still has the biggest HIV epidemic in the world, and one of many problems faced in the campaign to fight the virus is misinformation and lack of evidence. Many South African citizens aren't quite sure if the most effective treatment for HIV is antiretroviral medication or zingy lemon flavor herbal remedies. Oh God, wasn't that, was it the president of South Africa or someone who was like, uh, no, 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 it's okay, I'm not gonna get AIDS because after I have sex, I take a shower. And it's like, bro, <laughs> what? Although some of the crazy sh comes out about Corona, it's like, ah, oh, come on, come on, come on. You're not that dumb. You're not that, oh, you are. Way back in 1999, the health department took a positive step by distributing thousands of free condoms to places like Soweto and the Carlton Center in Johannesburg. In a very clever move, they packed the condoms with a leaflet which explained their importance and how to use them. In a slightly less clever move, they decided just to staple this leaflet onto each and every condom, punching a dirty great hole in it and rendering the condom utterly useless. You can't be serious. Wait, is this an advertising mistake? I guess they are advertising it, anyway. Um, it was never revealed just how many thousands of punctured condoms were distributed, but the public were quickly advised not to use them or pass them on when the government was alerted to the gaff. That kind of thing could only happen in South Africa. Oh, and maybe Texas, okay. About 20 years later, a barber in Texas began stapling condoms to his business cards. He explained on social media, I gotta include one of these with every card. You're going to need it after I cut your hair. 
Trust me, that's actually kind of clever. Although why not, I mean, go the extra mile and just print all your details on a condom. That would be cleverer and cooler. Naturally, it didn't take long for social media users to point out the slight, slight flaw in his logic, although one Twitter user reckoned he had the barber sussed. This man ain't dumb. He's gonna be cutting their kid's hair too and doubling his profits. Yeah, that's, that's, that's legit. Never forget. Oh God, it's gonna be a 9-11 one. Someone's gonna f real bad. Oh, finally, it's always a good idea to try and tie your marketing campaigns in with seasonal events and historic dates. Not 9-11 though, guys. And on that day, the San Antonio-based company Miracle Mattress thought it would be a fun idea to launch a 20-second commercial promoting their Twin Towers sale. If the, if the idea wasn't bad enough, the execution was even worse. The sales pitch was that for one day only, you could order any size mattress, even a giant king-size one, for the price of a relatively cheap twin mattress. So, the video opens with a female presenter and two male employees standing in front of two thoughtfully constructed tall towers of mattresses, one of which is adorned with a small American flag. I know where this is going. The presenter is clearly excited as she poses this intriguing question to the audience. What better way to remember 9-11 than with a twin tower sale? I don't know. How about any other f***ing way? We barely have time to mentally run through the literally billions of different ways, better ways to remember 9-11 before she goes through with the sales pitch. At the climax of the commercial, the presenter flings her arms wide and accidentally knocks back the two employees who are sent tumbling into the towers of mattresses which topple to the ground. Clearly wearing a mock oops expression, the presenter finishes off with a less sincere, we'll never forget. Oh, this is... Not surprisingly, this sparked sheer fury on social media, and the company was quick to pull the ad and deliver a gushing apology. Mike Bonanno, the owner of Miracle Mattress, he's gonna shift the blame. Are you ready for it? Owner of Miracle Mattress claimed that he had nothing to do with this ad, and that he would hold his employees accountable for the serious lapse of decency. In the, the store in question was even closed indefinitely following the backlash, although it's unclear for exactly what length of time it was closed, and it certainly seems to be open again now. But you can't help pondering that a number of people were probably involved in this commercial from initial conception to release, and it's quite staggering to imagine that at no point did anybody stop and say, actually, do you think this might be a bad idea? In my opinion, this has got to be a serious contender for the gold medal in the coveted just what the hell were the lunatics thinking category. This has been Business Blaze. I have been your boy with the blaze. Uh, smash that dislike button if I've offended you at some point in this video. It's entirely possible. It happens often. Smash that like button if you enjoyed it. Don't forget if you want to join ETA in being a, a, a dual language, dual, what is that? Bilingual. Bilingual ETA. Join him by getting Babbel. There is a link below, 50% off for six months. Support the show with that, by the way, and thank you for watching. No, 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 it's okay. I'm not going to get AIDS because after I have sex, I take a shower.